Good afternoon and welcome to BizTex Asian Midday Market Watch. Our guest today is Jeff Halley, Senior Market Analyst, Asia Pacific at Oanda. Hi, Jeff. Great to have you on the show. Always a pleasure, mate. Now, before we start, as always, let's take a look and see how crypto markets are first performing before going on to re regional markets. So we've got Bitcoin at 47,059. It's down 1.71%. Ethereum is uh, up 2% at 3,229.15. If we go across the region and look at regional markets, starting with the Nikkei, the Nikkei is up 0.87% uh, at 28,030. The Shanghai Composite is at uh, 3,501. It's down 0.75%. The Hang Seng is down 1.43% at 25,174.17. ASX 200 is up 0.55% at 7,545.7. The Kospi is up 0.59% at 3,164.82. And closer to home, uh, the SGX is at 3,058. It's down 1.41%. Rounding up the numbers, we've got Bursa Malaysia, which is at 1,601.38. It's up 0.71%. So pretty mixed bag, Jeff. Tell us why. Yeah, look, uh, the China data has definitely impacted uh, a number of uh, the markets around the region, Bangkok, Jakarta, particularly Singapore, which has a high correlation to China, yeah, Hong Kong, uh, and, and of course, the mainland, Taipei, are all lower after we had softer, much, much softer uh, services PMI from China today, suggesting that the uh, there's been some quite material impacts from the lockdowns that they had uh, in July. Uh, in August, sorry, uh, virus-related lockdowns at ports and cities uh, to contain the outbreaks, but also this ongoing regulatory clampdown that we're seeing now expand to what seems to be a new sector every single day. I, I can't keep up with them at the moment. Uh, yes, and so today that it's the gaming sector, isn't it? Because yeah, it was. children under 18 cannot spend more than an hour online from Fridays, weekends and holidays. Now that's kind of incredible. Three hours, actually. The Three hours, is it? Okay. Uh, yeah, so obviously some of the tech stocks have taken a beating on, on that one, but you know, tax bills to Chinese movie stars, uh, investigating margin brokerage operations uh, in the stock market. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, there's definitely seems to be some sort of cultural change going on here uh, in, in China with the government uh, pushing for a more inclusive society uh, and um, I guess pushing back on some of these more capitalist tendencies uh, and, and, and equalizing things out. Now, I don't have the quite the right words for it, but it seems to me to be this is going to be a long term process. It's not going to be a short term process and it will weigh I believe, on valuations of, of China stocks, uh, but also it may weigh on growth as well, dom particularly domestic growth. And I think we're seeing that through those PMIs, and that's why we've seen much of Asia uh, take fright today. Japan and Korea re re uh, also fell after that data came out, but they both posted reasonably decent data points this morning, and so they've recovered the early losses to sort of follow the, the US uh, direction. So, but Jeff, the, the, the slower economic growth in China obviously is going to deal another hammer blow to the regional growth story or the rather the regional recovery story because uh, the region has been badly hit by COVID. Yeah, I mean, on the headline and, and in the short term, but um, when we look at the PMI for manufacturing as well, we saw that our export orders had basically fallen just below 50, which is contractionary. The data components, the sub index components of that didn't make pretty reading either. I think when you take it all together, there's almost certainly going to be a triple R rate cut um, going on in uh, China and more stimulus measures. So whether that's more infrastructure or a weaker currency, uh, there will definitely be more monetary policy or fiscal stimulus going on if they follow the playbook of the last uh, 20 years. That is usually uh, a modest positive for Asia as a whole. I think it will limit the fallout in the stock market. So it, there's a balancing act. But yeah, I agree with you. In the bigger overall scheme of things, this could be a slight drag on Asia's recovery. The other thing that's weighing in the markets, obviously, uh, 
uh, in oil markets in particular was Hurricane Ida. Now it started off coming um, uh, ashore at a category four, but that risk has abated because it is now weakened to a category one. Um, what's your view on oil markets, particularly with the impending uh, OPEC plus meeting? Yeah, this one's a, a, a bit more um, opaque, shall we say, because the tropical storm it's become is going to dump all lot, lots and lots of water further upstate, which will then flow back through all of these oil producing and refining areas. So they could be in for a bit of a, a double dip ida, if you could call it that. It's <laughs> still unclear now um, the extent of the damage, but I note that the colonial pipeline, which is a key pipeline in uh, the US has been partially uh, restarted. Part of it runs from down in Louisiana and supplies aviation fuel and petrol to all of the Eastern United States. So that's a positive. Uh, look, I, I think that's why we've seen uh, oil prices perhaps retreat slightly uh, today. OPEC Plus, I think they'll look at Brent crude between 70 and $75, and that'll be their happy place. And they'll be comfortable that the market can absorb the extra 400,000 barrels per day. And the futures market still remains in backwardation. So despite the noise we're seeing at the front end in prices, it, that indicates that underlying real demand remains robust. So I expect them to green light an extra 400,000 barrels tomorrow, but I don't think it's going to push prices down. I think also the V-shaped recovery we saw in prices last week will give them some confidence that remain that demand remains robust as well. Uh, Jeff, uh, what should we be looking out for the rest of the week that will move markets? Well, okay, for, for, for Asia, we have uh, the Kaizen, uh, the China Kaizen uh, manufacturing PMI tomorrow. That's a much more broad based su uh, uh, survey. Uh, if that comes in low, like today's uh, headline one, we're probably going to see another leg down in China equity markets, and that will drag regional markets lower. We've also got uh, manufacturing PMIs from across Asia tomorrow as well. They'll be very closely monitored just to see what the state of the Asia uh, recovery is. And again, if those numbers are soft, we're probably in for a tough day at the office equity market wise uh, tomorrow. But all roads lead to the US non-farm payrolls on, on Friday. Um, and that is really going to determine the, the, mate, the, the real directional travel of markets uh, for the next uh, few weeks. If we get a number above a million jobs, uh, the taper tantrum will probably be back on. If we get a soft number below 600,000, 500,000, that's going to reduce those tapering fears and that will be bullish for equity markets all over the world and asset prices in general. Jeff, thanks again for coming on the show. Appreciate your insights. Thank you. Now, we've been speaking to Jeffrey Halley, Senior Market Analyst, Asia Pacific at Awanda on Vistax Asian Midday Market Watch. I'm Brian Fernandez. This video will be on our Facebook and LinkedIn pages, as well as our website, www.vistax.asia. Please subscribe and like our various platforms. Thanks a lot for tuning in.